Hi management students, Dr. Bowen here again to give you a quick overview of chapter two, which you should have read by now. So just to hit the highlights in the Bowen Rollins Martin book and to give you the main points about the definitions in that chapter. Definitions are a tremendous part of management and of the management course. For you to be successful in this course, it's necessary to learn the taxonomy of management which is almost like learning a foreign language. So let's talk a little bit about those definitions and the most important things to understand from that chapter. We define public relations as a management function. So what is a management function? And for that matter, what's management? You already know from your syllabus that management is the process of research and planning, of organizing, of leading and of controlling and doing that for an organization is the management process. Now there's a lot of perspectives on management and what's the best way to go about managing and doing each of those individual steps in the management process as well. But we'll keep it simple. We'll talk about the best type of management being that which helps an organization maintain its competitive advantage and to be as effective as it can possibly be. That positions it well in the marketplace to be competitive and to earn business and continue to exist and hopefully to thrive. So that's the management process. Now applying that to public relations, we'll talk about what is public relations. That definition you probably already know, but I prefer to stick with Grunig and Hunt's 1984 very simple definition, which is public relations is the management of communication between an organization and its publics. That definition is parsimonious and it breaks down exactly what the function does into very few concepts, key terms that we need to learn. So the management just like we said, the four-step process of what? Of communication. So we're using communication as a tool by which to manage, and that communication can happen in hundreds of formats. The management of communication between an organization or an enterprise, a nonprofit, an educational institution, a corporation, normally a competitive business is what we're talking about because we see business as, as related to management. And then of course, the management of communication between an organization and its publics. Publics are stakeholders of various types. They may be audiences if they receive a message, but stakeholders have a stake in the organization, meaning that they have some something that ties them to that organization. It might be a financial concern like an investment. It might be a paycheck. It might be that they're a supplier for the organization and they're tied to that organization's success because it buys supplies to make some other product from them. So it includes business to business relationships, employer employee relationships, and so on. So there are different, different uh, different definitions of publics and stakeholders and I will just say don't get too caught up in trying to determine which is which. There are different types of publics. Publics normally organize themselves around certain issues whereas stakeholders are generally connected by a financial concern. But don't be too caught up in determining different types of publics and whether they're also stakeholders or not because sometimes groups can be both categorizations. So the next thing I wanted to talk about with chapter two is once we've understood the definition of public relations that we just discussed from Grunig and Hunt, know that there are some competing definitions of public relations. These are discussed in the textbook and many of them are flawed because they depend on what we call mutually beneficial relationships. So they'll say public relations is the creation and maintenance of mutually beneficial relationships. That's a wonderful thing when it's possible and when your interests coincide with that of another group, such as a strategic partnership, for example. But the definition is flawed because public relations doesn't always depend on mutual benefit. In other words, if we're a part of strategic management, we are competitive and we help our businesses compete in the marketplace. So to define a relationship as mutually beneficial may not be possible. For example, what happens when your organization gets sued or gets a class action lawsuit filed against it? 
You can't have mutually beneficial relationships in a competitive zero-sum environment where there's a winner and a loser. Additionally, public relations to be a strategic management function and have a seat at the management table alongside the CEO and other management level functions must help the organization be competitive. So by defining our relationships with a predetermined outcome of mutually beneficial, we're no longer helping the organization be as competitive as it can be. Rather, we should be strategic. So we should help the organization be ethical and compete fairly, but we should always be strategic, doing our research and planning, helping to leverage our competitive advantage in the marketplace as much as possible to help that organization be effective. And finally, it's not always ethical to have a mutually beneficial relationship determine your decision making or the activities that you undertake in public relations. I have a recent journal article with Robert Heath, one of the most published scholars in the field. He and I explore the climate change issue in detail, thinking about how could you have a mutually beneficial relationship in that environment that's so complex and has so many constituencies. We determine that you can't it's much better to have a strategic issues management perspective in which you're defining the issues based on research and you're trying to determine the best course of action ethically and competitively for your organization. You're advising your dominant coalition and CEO leadership team on that course of action and then you're trying to competitively speak in the marketplace based on what you believe to be ethical and right as you define the issue and solve future problems. So we believe that strategic issues management offers a much more satisfactory definition of public relations because it allows you to truly sit at the management table. It allows you to determine the best case of action based on research, ethics, and planning rather than have a predetermined outcome in mind. So we hope that that definition will help you see how public relations is a management function, that it helps an organization be competitive and effective. That's it for chapter two. Enjoy these dog days of summer because before long it's going to be sweater weather. Take care. See you